just what I wanted from the Lord. I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted. I got just what I wanted.
there's gonna be a meeting tonight Oh, a meeting tonight Meeting on the old campground Oh, glory! Gonna be a meeting tonight Oh, meeting tonight Meeting on the old campground Glory! Gonna be a meeting tonight
gonna let it shine Everywhere I go I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine Let it shine We'll hide it under a bush or no I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. All in this world, I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, all in this world, I'm gonna let it shine. All in this world, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. You know the harvest is right. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, the harvest is right. I'm gonna let it shine. The harvest is right. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, the labors have been few. I'm gonna let it shine. You know the labor's been due. I'm gonna let it shine. The labor's been few. I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Yes, the harvest is ripe, yes, and the labors surely have been few. Amen. Look at us now. Look at America. Praise God. The scripture says, pray therefore the Lord of the harvest that he send forth more labors.
washing in the wind For Jesus he lives in me Oh he lives, he lives, he lives in me Oh he lives in me Jesus Christ my blessed King Today he lives Yes, He lives, He lives, He lives in me. Oh, He lives in me. Jesus Christ, my blessed King. Oh, He lives. Jesus Christ, my blessed King. He lives, he lives, he lives in me. Oh, he lives in me. Jesus Christ, my blessed King. Yes, he lives in me. Hallelujah. Praise God. I love him. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Sure. Praise God. Hallelujah, Brother Aaron. Did you have something you're going to share? Praise His holy name. Praise His holy name. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I I found Him one day. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, He He turned my world around. Honestly, he turned my world all around. I thought I had everything fixed. But you know, he fixed me. I mean, he fixed me. He put something in me. Oh, you know, if you just would give him a chance. He'll turn your life all the way around. He'll give you life more abundantly. Hallelujah. You know, I was I was out in the world. I had oh I had a lot of things going on. But you know. He took all that away. Thank you, Lord. I mean, He took it away. Just like snapping your finger. And when I got saved, oh, what a blessed day that was. I mean, I, when God saved me again, I mean, he, he put something in me that I don't want to go back out there in the world. The world got lots of things that'll try to track your mind, try to pull you away from what you want to be. You know, I want to be a soul winner for Jesus. That's what I want to be. I mean, a soul winner for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My soul says, yes, Lord. I want to go to the foreign fields. I mean, I'll go and tell them what Jesus said. Not what man want to say. Not what man says. Man got a lot of different things what Jesus said. Jesus said, go ye into the land and teach them y'all His Word, not their words. You know, they'll go over there and they'll say this and they'll say that they will never say what jesus said he said preach the gospel of jesus christ and that only hallelujah i love him i mean i love that man called jesus because he saved this old boy from hell 
I mean, I know where I was going. Thank you, Lord. I was on my way to hell that day. But you know what? He turned all of it around. And I thank Him for it. Because, you know, when you get in hell, there's no way out. There's a place you go. Mama can't come down. Daddy won't go down. Brother won't go down. Sister won't go down. It's for you to pray and ask God to save you. He'll save your soul. He'll make you whole too. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, Praise Jesus. The Lord. He's he's a he's a master. His name is Jesus. And I praise Him. I love Him. I give all my life to Him. If He would tell me today, sell your house and home and, and go to the foreign field, I would be so happy. Praise the Lord. Because you know that's my heart's desire. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Jesus. And we call it vision for the world. We got a vision for the world. Amen. But Sister Susie felt led of the Lord to buy this little tent from a man in Alabama. And I'm so glad she did because our big tent wouldn't fit here. I asked that man next door if we could set it up over there one time, but he hadn't responded yet. But I just want to welcome those that just stumbled in from the highways and hedgeways. This is what the ministry is. Amen. It's not about being in the biggest, nicest cathedral in Greenville, but praise God, Jesus shows up in the unexpected places. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. And I'm glad that you're here today. It's not, a, it's not no coincidence that you're here. God led you here and God directed you here. Amen. Because the Lord is raising up a people and a body of people to be part of that army that Sister Joyce was talking about. Joel saw the army and we blew the trumpet uh, Sister um, Destiny blew the trumpet when we got started here and I'm a firm believer in sounding the alarm amen the Bible says awaken the mighty men and women of war yeah. see the Bible is no descript no uh, he's not prejudiced the, Jesus is no respect to persons where it says man in the Bible, you can actually put woman. Because the book of Joel says upon my handmaids and servants. That's these days that God is going to pour out his spirit upon. Amen. Amen. And right now the Lord is shortage of workers Amen. in the field. Amen. Yes. It's a shortage. Yes. You know, we recently come back from Philippines. And uh, I was privileged to work out there in that mission field for the Lord for one full month. I didn't want to go for two weeks because it's a long journey over there. It, it took us about three days to get there and about two, three days to get back. But I am so happy that the Lord used us in his service over there. I'm so glad that the islands we went to, not one, not two, but many of the islands we went to, we've seen salvation after salvation and deliverance after deliverance. Amen. Praise God. We've seen 2,000 people get saved. And come forward and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the Lord didn't let us rest one bit. The, we didn't have a big backing over there. But as soon as we got to the Philippines, the Lord gave us two interpreters and then later a third interpreter to be with us. And uh, the meetings just fell into line. It was just unreal how well everything went and coordination, how it went. Amen. We went from prison to prison. We went from jail to jail. We went to a woman's uh, prison. We went to a female uh, prison I, 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 with just inmates of women. And we went to a children's prison. And two of those kids in that prison, it was written on the board, had committed murder. And out of 85 of those kids that came to that service that day, there was three girls. All 85 of those prisoners got saved. Amen? And then the 100... Prisoners that we went to the biggest prison in Cebu, which was uh, 5,000 members. The Lord led us in there and they only let 100 members 
of that prison come into the chapel, all 100 come forth and confess the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. All 100 lifted their hands and asked the Lord to come into their body and allow the Lord to use them and allow the Lord to touch them and allow the Lord to heal them and to save them. Hallelujah. It was the greatest miracle that I've ever seen. So many souls get saved. You know, we've been in the harvest field in Canada. We've traveled to the Caribbean. We've been all over the United States preaching. But I've never seen 400 people come forward in a service and accept the Lord like I did in the Philippines. Hallelujah. We were just going from village to to village. We went off the beaten path. We went into the lanes and streets. As a matter of fact, I told them, I said, we're going up into the jungle tomorrow. We went, there's no path, no way you can get a car up there. Maybe an ox cart, which we almost had to hire the ox cart to drag some uh, uh, rice up there because we were, we were, it's hard not to give those people something. They're so poor. We spend more in coffee and drinks in America than they make in an entire month. You to calculate how much coffee and drinks we drink, we're drinking as much as they make in an entire month. They're poor. They're poor. Very poor. It's hard not to be moved to give them something. And we felt led of the Lord to give out thousands of pounds of rice and noodles and hundreds and hundreds of Old and New Testaments. In this particular case, we went up into the jungle and I, we rented five motorcycles and we all boarded the bikes, loaded the rice up, transported all of our equipment up into the jungle and preached Jesus Christ only. Amen. We didn't lift up an organization. We didn't lift up my name. Amen. I don't even think they remember my name. The only name that I wanted them to remember when we left was at the name of Jesus. Yes. Every knee would bow. And every tongue would confess. This truly was a season Amen. of revival. Yes. This truly was a season where the Lord poured out his spirit. Because, you know, there was a man that lived in that village we went up to in the jungle. But he wasn't able to attend that service because he wasn't around Leite at the time or around that village. But we took a boat and rented a boat to go across the Philippine Sea to the island of Logan. It was about an hour and a half, two hour ride. But that man knew that there had been a, a revival of healing. I need healing. I need the Lord to touch my body. And they brought him across the ocean in a chair. They toted this chair. One guy on this side, one guy on that side. And sat him down in the service. And we got this on video. I prayed for him and then I continued to preach for about 30 minutes and then Susie and brother Tom said to Pat prayed for him and then brother Richard prayed for him and lo and behold we found that he had a stroke hadn't walked or talked in one whole year that man got up and began walking and praising God I'm telling you what he broke He's, he, he just started crying I seen tears of joy just falling down onto the ground and in that same meeting, there was probably at least 85 to 100 young people that were laid out on the concrete, slain in the Spirit of God, yielding up the, to God, and God touched them, receiving the Holy Ghost. We were right outside a church, and the lady that invited us to preach in the church said, you guys might as well have the service right here in the basketball court. They drug out their equipment. They put the soundboard out there. They bring the keyboard out there. They bring guitars out there. The amplifier system. And we had our amplified system. And praise God, it, was, it just reminded me of the days of Jesus. How Jesus walked through the marketplaces, amen. And preached the gospel of the kingdom of God. And reached out to the lost souls, amen. And, and I just want to tell you, we went to that island unannounced. We didn't plan it. We just picked the island out there and we went. But on the way, we done a video and I said, I believe the Lord is going to help us take this island. You know, the Bible says the violent take it by force. The Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it by force. If we want something that we don't got, we got to pray and push until we get it. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah. And I was looking for revival. I've been, you know, I, I felt like Joseph in a pit where there was no water. And I felt that, praise God, I wanted a drink. I wanted a outpour. I wanted a touch. Just one drop of the rain. And I prayed on the way to Philippines. It was a 10 hour. First of all, it was a but a five and a half hour flight to fly out to Seattle. And then from Seattle, it was another eight and a half, no, 15 hours to fly to uh, Qatar. And, and that's another story altogether. And from there, it was another nine hours to fly to the Philippines. No easy ride getting to the Philippines. Halfway around the world in another time zone. We're at six o'clock here at night. It's six o'clock in the morning there. That's how far off we are out there. But I picked that little country of Qatar which is you know out there by the Persian Gulf and there's no preaching Jesus there it's all Muslim there it's illegal to preach Jesus it's a death sentence to preach Jesus but praise God that the immigration they let us into that that city of Qatar and we found our way to the park and before we did we prayed and we said God if you don't want us in the Middle East if you don't want us here preaching the gospel if you don't want us here to be a witness then you stop us right here at the immigration but that immigration officer he couldn't say no to us sister he absolutely could he was looking at our passports and I said we're traveling as a group I didn't know if he thought we were missionaries or what we were, Americans. You know, I'm a Canadian and an American. My son's a Canadian and American. But praise God, finally he made these weird faces, looked up at me, looked at the pathway. He said, all right, you guys can go then. Because they wanted a certain uh, layover time. But we, we done got to the point of it was about six hours, all we had in that country. But as soon as we got in that country, a Filipino man walked up to us and said, God sent me to help you. Where do you guys want to go? And then a, God sent this black guy to us. And he said the same thing. He seen the guitars and he said, I love music. Where are you guys going? He said, I'm on board. And next thing you know, we had a little entourage going into a country where it's illegal to preach Jesus. Or worse yet, they could probably persecute you and cut your head off. No evangelism of Jesus allowed there. But we went to the park anyways. Praise God. And Sister Pat was bold to sing. And Sister Susie was bold to sing. And Brother Tom sang. And I opened up with a verse of scripture. And the verse of scripture that came to my mind was Joel 2 and 38. The same scripture that Sister Joyce had expounded on a little bit earlier. Upon my handmaids and servants of those days. That's these days that the Lord wants to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't have to be in a church. Praise God. The Bible says where two or three are gathered, there he is in the midst. He's just as much right here amongst us under this little canvas tent today as in the nicest cathedral in Atlanta. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As a matter of fact, Jesus died without the city. They pushed Jesus out. They rejected him and dejected him. He came to his own, the Bible said, and his own received him not. But he said to as many as them that received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. I am so happy to be used with God. I am just looking forward to our next missionary trip. We already scheduled a trip to go to Canada in November. So I want you to all pray with us. We've had three. This will be our third trip to Canada this year. We had had a powerful tent revival. A, a week's worth of tent revival. All the way up halfway to Alaska. On a native reservation. God sends us to places where other people don't go. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Amen. I am set for the defense of the gospel. Amen. I want to be bold for preacher for Jesus Christ. I want to. I'm, I believe I'm born to preach. Amen. There's a gift and there's a calling of God upon certain individuals. And you cannot escape the call of God. I don't care what kind of sex that you get into. I don't care what kind of drug you take. There's not a methamphetamine and there's not a pill. Hallelujah. That can replace the gospel of Jesus Christ. That can replace, hallelujah, the anointing of Jesus Christ in your life. Because you'll never be at peace unless you're with Jesus Christ. I've done every drug that you could imagine, amen. I've drank a lot of whiskey and drank wine and, and smoked up and got high. Found myself 
high on LSD in a graveyard for about three days. Praise God. But that's when at your darkest hour, Jesus Christ can appear to you. Amen. And at that hour, at the darkest time of my life, suicidal and, and, and didn't care about life and, and was living life on the edge. Praise God, Jesus came to me in the darkest hour and he touched my life. And I left that graveyard that night and I've never been the same. I got a video that I put up online when I was standing on a chain that was chained the ferry down. And I begin to tell how the chains that used to bind me, they're laying at my feet. In other words, Jesus gave me a robe of royalty and gave me a change of garments. I took off my filthy garments, amen, and unloosed those binds that used to bind my hand. Pornography, lust, perversion, all manner of uncleanness. I used to smoke one split for one joint after the other thinking that was going to bring me peace but all it did was give me a bad habit and keep me broke all the time praise God that this here admission is free underneath this tent while well, right now people are seeking to get into these nice clubs in Greenville well you don't have to pay anything to get into the kingdom of God for freely we receive freely we give unto you hallelujah oh praise God tonight uh, is our night amen Thank you, Jesus. I just want to read one verse of scripture and I'm going to get out of the way because I know we got some others that testify and want to bring honor and glory to the Lord Jesus Christ. But that is just a little bit of what we've seen in the Philippines. I am serious. Hey, man, that that coordinator that got a hold of us, Brother Richard, he wanted us to preach three times a day, Brother Aaron. And it just began to think, man, of how the man of God used to preach three times a day and twice a day. And we were barely able to keep up one service a day and sometimes two. And there was a time we preached three out there. But praise God, I finally slowed him down. I said, look, we got to have a little bit of rest because we were traveling by boat, by motorcycle, by vans. Amen. And we were just going here, there and everywhere. But one day at the hotel... He knocked on my door and he said, Brother Ron, I've got a group out here. He had three young girls out there. And uh, another brother named Jess, Jeffrey, which had gotten saved at one of our crusades and joined up our evangelistic team. As we begin to go, we begin to grow. Amen. Next thing we know, we had as high as 10, 15 people traveling with us. Uh, hallelujah. Administering the gospel, distributing the Bibles and ministering to the needs of the poor. And they are poor. Many of them didn't even have a Bible on hand. But we put the Bible in their hand. Amen. And brought them the word of God. But this particular night, he knocked on my door. We done preached twice that day already. And he said, Brother Ron, come on out here. And I said, okay, I'll come on out there. And at about midnight, it was about midnight, there was three young girls. One was 15, one was 17, and one was 21. Praise God. And by the time I finished ministering, 15 minutes of preaching only, not a one hour sermon, not a two hour sermon, but just 15 minutes of preaching, that brother Jeffrey wanted prayer. We prayed for him. He was laying out on the concrete and got up. His hairs were standing up on his arms. God give him confirmation. And we prayed for each and every one of those girls, those three girls. They all confess the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior and give their heart to Jesus Christ. And ask the Lord to heal them and touch them right now. And God did. And they were laying out on the ground right there. Amen. Because the Bible says many are the slain of the Lord. See, the first man, Adam, was a living soul. But the second man, Adam, was a quickening spirit. So I believe that God's spirit can quicken you. Amen. I believe God's spirit can prompt you. Amen. I believe God's spirit can awaken you in the night and cause you to seek him and reach out after him. And this is the season. Like the sister saying, you know, Jesus. He said, think not that I've not come to destroy the law of the prophets. I'm not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Jesus kept many of the Jewish customs and many of the feasts Jesus went to. He said, I've not come to destroy, but I've come to fulfill. And I truly believe that we are in a season of revival. Amen. I believe that we are in a time where God wants to touch us and heal us. Amen. I believe that the Lord wants to pour out his spirit upon us 
You know, we seek for a city whose builder and maker is God. But I'm seeking for some clouds with rain in them. Amen. I'm tired, hallelujah, of being thirsty. I'm tired of being hungry. I'm tired, hallelujah, of going out empty-handed and coming back empty-handed. But this is the time the Bible says, uh, if he that goeth forth and beareth precious seed, hallelujah, weepeth and rejoicing shall no doubt come bringing his sheaves with him. Hallelujah. We're not going to come back empty handed because Jesus said, if you preach the word and be instant in season and a true witness delivers souls. I want to just read this scripture. This is Proverbs 16 and 15. In the light of the king's countenance is life. And in his favor is the cloud of the latter rain. How many know that Joel talked about a latter rain? How many know that we've received the former rain? And yes, I'm not saying that we haven't been in revivals before. But how many know that Jesus has saved the best for the last? Hallelujah. How many know, hallelujah, that many are called but few are chosen. So Jesus wants us to give us a good glass of that new wine. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. Because he said right here, and I'm going to get out the way. He said, the glory of this latter house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place, I will give peace. Hallelujah. So that is a prophecy from one of the prophets in the Bible. And I believe in the prophetic word of God. I, I do believe in the evangelists and the pastors. But I got to tell you, if you believe in an evangelist and a pastor, you also have to believe in the apostle and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Because it's a fivefold ministry and it's the foundation of the prophets. And the apostles, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone that we are built upon. Like he told Peter, and I'm going to get out the way. I'm a preacher, you can tell. He said, upon this rock, not a cathedral, but the rock being the revelation that Jesus Christ has come not to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Upon this rock, I'll build my church and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. I don't care how much the devil huffs and puffs and tries to shut down the revival and tries to take down the Ten Commandments and pushes prayer to the schools and brings in abortion and brings in all this old evil lust uh, the flesh and the pride of life uh, and evil doing were, were waxing worse and worse. It don't matter the hill of beans to me because I read the book of Revelation and I read the final chapter and we're going to have revival. And that's what I'm here for in America. And I'm you can tell that I'm a very good patriotic American, even though I'm a Canadian. Uh, hallelujah. I'm fighting for revival because I came out of the lanes and streets and the highways and headways and that is where the Lord is sending me into the highways and headways to reap the harvest field. Amen. Brother Ron and the team out here would consist of a powerful team of ministers here and prayer warriors because without prayer, there is going to be no power. Amen. Because the Bible says, when Zion travails, they brought forth sons and daughters. Amen. I'm going to get out the way. Brother Tom, sit to Pat. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank God. That whole trip to me for me personally was that 5,000 man prison that I went into I mean I, I saw so many miracles I, I saw miracles and I saw God move by the hundreds in gymnasiums that were full they would just take the gymnasiums and they were, they were filled up I've never stood before that many people quite like that and, and you know what I mean? It didn't make a bit of difference. It doesn't make a bit of difference if it's one or two or 500. It doesn't make a bit of difference. And you just do the same thing. But the, the, people, <laughs> the people are so hungry. And they didn't care how long you went. They didn't care if you had three or four or five preachers and a prayer line. They didn't care. They waited to the end. And after it was over, lots of times they were there right there, you know, trying to, to, to talk to you and, and reaching out for more. And they would, they, would, they would be around. And when we left, they was, there were was some of them still gathered. 
Praise God. So, and like Brother Ron said, we just kept on picking up people as we went until we had 15, you know, traveling with us. And it was, it was a true blessing of God. Actually, it was the most fulfillment in, that I've ever had in my life was, was to see that. But when I was, when I w we went into that prison and I was telling Sister Joyce last night, we, we went through like these halls. Well, first of all, the Lord had broken my spirit, but we went through these halls and, and, and I'd been praying and crying for a couple of hours. And when I got in there, the Lord really just took me over. I know, I knew it was just Jesus flowing through me. It wasn't anything wasn't anything but I didn't care that I was a woman surrounded by all these men and I couldn't see brother Ron sister Susie I couldn't see my husband I didn't know where anybody was all I saw was 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 men and I kept on going down the wrong halls and going down into the wrong tunnels where they where they were and this one person that was a a, a prisoner he'd have a stick yeah and he was a prisoner too, and he'd get that stick and kind of push them out of the way after a while. And, and, but the Lord just took me over and I, I was just reaching out to them and praying for them. And, 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 and they were so hungry, like I said, they would, they would circle me. But uh, there was this one man I saw, so I was reaching out for everyone. I, everyone I could see, I was reaching out. And, and there was this one man he was, he was, there was all these men standing up and there was this one man, he was down on the ground. And when I looked at him, his eyes were all black. Both of his eyes were black. And, and I don't know, honestly, he looked like something out of hell is what he looked like. And I reached out to him. I reached out and they were like surprised and they saw me reach down. I reached down through the men and I reached out to him, and I, and I prayed for him. And the Lord gave me this scripture in Jude, and it says, and it's in Jude, and it's the 21st verse, and it says, Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life, and of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear. He was crouched down. He was crouched down, brothers and sisters, like he was, like he was hiding. But, but, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Praise God. And, and, and I kept on seeing that man's face. And I kept on, and, and, and it was just such an experience. Just, and I grabbed his hand. I grabbed his hand and I started praying for him and I felt like I was right there pulling him out of the fire. That he had right then, he had one foot going down to hell. Amen. And I was just pulling him out, pulling him out. Praise God. Praise God. And when I, when I got it, finally made my way up in, in the men with the stick, start, you know, leading me. When I finally made my way into the room. As soon as I got into the room, I just started praying for people. Just laying hands and, and praying for people. It just felt such a love. And to me, from my own personal experience, that was the highlight of my whole trip. Yeah. Was to feel Jesus take me over like that. And I remember, even though we, saw, we did see miracles every night, like the brother was saying, we'd have... We'd have prayer line. People would come up to the front. Hundreds of people would receive miracles. We, we'd all pray. And, and many of the miracles were demonstrated. We saw people, you know, dancing. But there was one night, and, and, and there was a man that came up to me in one of the gymnasiums. So there was hundreds of people. And he came up to me, and I testified about it in the prison. And he went like this with his heart, like this. And he stood there. And, and many times when I would pray for people, I'd lay my hands on their heart. And I'd pray that Jesus would give them a true experience. Because I love the miracles. I love that. I mean, I love that. The Bible says to go into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. And he said that you shall lay hands on the sick and they shall be delivered. But more than anything, what I long to see is lives changed, is people's hearts transformed, is the, is the, the stony heart being taken out of a person and give them a heart that would serve the Lord and give them a heart that would just love the Lord. And so I would lay my hands lots of times. And there was a brother traveling with us, a Filipino brother. He really did have a gift of miracles, you know. And I know God brings the, the, body, of, the body of Christ together. And we all have different places in the body of Christ. But I would pray a lot for people's hearts. And I'd pray for their mind. And I'd pray just just for their bodies also but this man when he came up to me hitting his heart like this and and he said to me he said he said all this is good and he was so sincere and broken and and all this is good he said he said the singing is good the preaching is good he said the miracles the healings but he just looked at me and he said like this and he kept on hitting his heart and he said but what God has done tonight in my heart he said what God did for me in my heart he said he said that means more than anything more than anything and and what does the Bible say in first Corinthians 13 though I speak with tongues as of men and angels and have not charity it profiteth me nothing. Though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth nothing. Shall not many say, Lord, Lord, and say, have we not prophesied in thy name? Have we not had wonderful gifts for the gifts and the calling of God are without repentance? Have we not done all, laid our hands on the sick? And what will the Lord say? Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity, for you do not know me. Because they lost that touch in their heart. So to see that meant everything to me. And one time I was in a, uh, the Lord had sent me up to New England with my daughter. She was doing her master's and the Lord had me go. And if you've ever been up north like I have and to to. It's an evil place. It's such an evil place, Esther. It's such an evil place. It's so much more evil than it is even in the South. And in the South, we're, we're blinded. But when you go up North, you find towns and cities that are totally given over to witchcraft. Yeah. And the same thing in Canada. It's even worse. It seems like the further up North you go, the worse it is. Praise God, but in Vermont, I, I would walk down and I'd pray for the little town of Mount Pelia, which is the capital of the city, the state, the capital of the state. And I'd pray for this city that was given over with to witchcraft. All you can feel was deadness. They just didn't know the Lord. And, you know, there was a lot of... There's a lot of Hindus and Muslims and uh, you see people, they say, well, I was raised Catholic, but basically they know nothing. That's all they know is, and they say, well, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I thought maybe if you sprinkle some water on me when I'm a baby and you uh, they get the last rites that I can just live like that, like the devil all my life. But if they sprinkle a little water on me, now I know Jesus went to the thief on the cross. He did. But how do we know that we'll have that opportunity that the thief on the cross did? But I, I was up in this town and I was at a college and I was surrounded by all kinds of people. Now I love all people. Jesus came into all the world to save the lost. But I would say there was more transgender people in that school than there was straight people. 
There was a lot of people, you know, married woman to woman and man to man. And, you know, Jesus loves them just like anything else. But he doesn't save them in their sin. He does save them from their sin. Because there's a reason why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Praise God. But Jesus has to come to you with the grace of God. And without the grace of God, how can you deny worldly lusts? It's only through the grace of God, the saving grace of Jesus Christ. And that's why I cling to the grace of God. I don't cling to a false doctrine or a false interpretation of the Bible that says I can sin a little bit every day. But I cling to the grace of God yeah. that Jesus gave us when he died and shed his blood for you and me. But I was in that little town and there was a talent show. And I'm not a very good musician. You might say... And a very good singer. You might say I'm like the third string. <laughs> Praise God. When they put the football teams in, you know, you got to be winning to get to the third string. That's me. But at, do everything as unto the Lord. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. But I felt led to get into this talent show. And I called up my sister. I called up my husband. And I said, you all have to pray for me. My daughter told me, she said, she said, mom, don't you dare. You know, there's all her friends. And that was about 500 people in, in that talent show now. I'm talking about not in it, but in the audience. So actually, I have been in front of some crowd. A crowd. That was probably the biggest crowd. One of the biggest crowds. One time God anointed me in a Wesleyan church. And I stood up in there. You remember that? Lord. There was a couple hundred people packed in there. So the Lord has had a way of getting a hold of me. Really, it doesn't matter. I've known Esther all my life. She's seen me all my life. If the Holy Ghost would fall on me, it did not matter where I was or what I was doing or why I was there. Because I didn't put confidence in my flesh. I put confidence in the grace of God that was bestowed upon me when I was first saved. Praise God. So I, before I finish this story about Vermont, I'm going to tell you how I was first saved. I was first saved when I was in, when I was in college myself. And there was a little Jewish girl that had had an experience with the Lord. And I was raised Catholic. Uh, my mother's Catholic. I was raised Catholic. Was went to con con communion, confirmation, and it was such a blessing because most of the people in the Philippines are Catholic. So I was able to communicate to them on thing on matters that I knew of firsthand, and and they were hungry. Catholics are hungry for God. Man, they're hungry. They're, they, there's, there's more Catholics. I believe there's more Muslims, they say, in the world. But besides Muslim, there's a lot of Catholics. And that's why I'm glad God, I was raised Catholic and God picked me up. Hallelujah. Because when he reached down for me, he had to reach way down. And he picked my, me up and he set my feet upon a solid rock. Praise, the Lord. Praise God. But I really didn't know anything about the Lord. All I knew was I wasn't allowed to say the name of Jesus. That's the way it was in the, in the 70s when I was saved, where I lived. And I went to Mass every Sunday. I went to confession. I ate my fish. I, I followed the ordinances to a certain extent of the, the Catholic, of the Catholic Church. But besides from that, I lived like the devil every day of my life. And I met this little Jewish girl, and she first told me about Jesus. And she told me in a way I had never heard in my life. And, and she kept on inviting me to go to this little Bible study in the basement of a house. And, and I said, well, you know, if Jesus drank wine, you tell me he did, then I can smoke pot, and, and that's what I want to ask them. And... Um, she said, well, I don't care what you say. 
just come on. (laughs) And so I did. And when I walked in there, you know what I did? I walked in there and there was a whole room full of them. And they didn't say a word to me. And I walked in there and I said, I have a question for you. I said, if Jesus drank wine, then I'd like to, you know, I think I can smoke pot and that you shouldn't have an attitude about it or anything. And, um, and you know, that man just picked up, just looked at me, never said anything. He smiled. He picked up the guitar and started playing Amazing Grace. It's the first time I ever heard Amazing Grace in my life. And when I heard Amazing Grace, the Spirit of the Lord, I know it was the angel of the Lord. I know it was the angel of Jesus Christ. I know it was the Spirit of the Lord that came over me. And I don't know how long I was there. I don't know if I was there for... I must have been there for a couple of hours because when I came out of it, everybody was leaving and congratulating me. And all I knew is that I felt like, you know, if you know the color spectrum, this is why I've described it many times, white is at one end and black is at the other. And they're both common. And they're, they're both colors. You know, they're both, they're both colors. But white, the color white, is different from the color black. And that's what the devil is. He's the prince in the power of the air. He's the prince of darkness. And Jesus has come to bring us into his glorious light. And all I know was all the things that I had experienced through drugs, through all the different sects, through the music and all the different rock festivals I had attended, all the things that I had experienced, people don't realize it's a spiritual realm that you're entering into. And all I know is that it was common in that it was a spiritual realm, but it was totally different. You see, God is a supernatural God. This world is what's make-believe. This world, we're just pilgrims and strangers. We're just passing through. But eternal life is what's real. Amen. It's something tangible. It's something that everybody, it doesn't matter who you are, you will stand before the judgment seat of God. It is appointed unto you once to die, and after this the judgment. Therefore, when that big video camera comes down, This word, we're going to be judged for the words that we hear in our life. We're going to be judged. So judgment begins first at the house of God. And if the Christians scarcely be saved, then where can the ungodly and the unrighteous appear? Praise God. But I had a real experience that night in that little Bible study. I had a true experience with God, but I had no idea what had happened to me. All I knew was something strange. And I just, I walked out of there and I said, well, I'm done with that. Uh, I'm going to make believe that never happened. Uh, I don't even know what happened. I don't want to ever see that girl again that took me to that weird place. Everybody congratulating me. Nobody ever told me that I was supposed to be saved. Nobody ever told me I was raised Catholic. Nobody ever told me Jesus was coming back in the clouds of glory. I didn't know anything. I had never held a Bible in my hand. I guess that's one of the reasons why I can't hardly get the Bible out of my hand. I like my little Bible because I can hold it right in my hand. And even if I don't read the word, I just like to hold it in my hand. And sometimes when I'm preaching in the street corner, I might just shake it at him like that. Because, <laughs> because the word of God is powerful to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and joint and marrow. It pierces. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, it was six months I ran from God, but the angel of the Lord chased me. He chased me down. I got into trans. Then I got into transcendental meditation. God began to study karate, began to get into yoga, just began to do 
all just totally into all kinds of things. Anything to try to make me forget what had happened. I couldn't even go out in the daytime. I didn't want to go out until the night. I couldn't stand to look at the sky because I knew Jesus was coming back. It was so real to me. My eyes and my understanding were opened. And that little girl had given me the Bible. And any time I did decide to open it and glance at it, it was like those words would just jump out and convict me. I'd throw it down. Just one verse. One verse. And I'd run from it. So I had a real experience with Jesus. And one day when I was coming back from the dojo, a force of the devil, really, tried to take my steering wheel of my car and, and was pulling it. And time was all turned around and suspended. And, I, and a voice spoke to me and said, you are a chosen vessel. You have no choice but to serve the Lord. If you don't give your life to the Lord, the devil is going to come and kill you and take your soul to hell before you have a chance to surrender to the Lord. And right then in that state of mind that the Lord allowed me to be in, I said, Lord, I'll serve you. I just felt it. I knew. I had no other choice but to serve the Lord. I wasn't going to that hell because I knew that was real. As much as I felt that spirit of the Lord upon me, I knew hell was real. And my whole life I've been scared of hell. Ever since I was a little girl, I've had a fear of, 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 of hell. One time a young man before that experience happened in New York in the Bible study, a young man tried to pick me up on the college campus. And just like he, you know, he didn't pass me a little blunt and he'd say, uh, do you believe in God? That's what, yeah, yes, you know, it's a beautiful, sunshiny day. Oh, man, everybody get around smoking up. You know, everybody will eventually get to that subject because you're entering into a spiritual realm. That's why. But that particular time when that man said that to me, that young man, I said to him, I looked at him. And a, a wind came out of nowhere and blew over me. And that's the first time I ever felt the hairs on my arms stand up. And, and I looked at him and I said, I believe in heaven. I believe there's a heaven. And I believe that there's a hell. And I know that there's a God. And see, it wasn't too long. See, the Lord. The Lord, his eyes are going to and fro through the whole earth seeking out those whose heart is perfect in the sight of them. Well, did I seem like a perfect person? No, I was very imperfect. But, but God saw something in my heart. I think he saw that fear in me. That's what he saw. Because Jesus grew in the fear of God. You know, the fear of God is a good fear. We need to get a hold to the fear of God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. We need to quit running around playing games with the, with the world and with the devil. We need to get scared of God and of eternal life. Glory. Praise God. But so that's when I went to the Philippines. That kind of experience is why I hunger for a changing experience. But that night back in Vermont, this was just a couple of years ago, I, I went to that talent show. <laughs> And I started playing the song. And when I started playing the song, the, cl the glory cloud just filled that whole place. This was nothing I did. It was nothing I did. My daughter Miriam told me, she said, Mom, she said, that voice that came out of you was not your voice. She said, I never heard you play the guitar or sing like that ever and, and I just, and I was just reaching out to the Lord. And, and, and all I did was sing that song. That's all I did. And it was creator, create in me something to glorify thee. Amen. And I told them, all I said to them were the words was, I said, the breath of God, the breath of creation is in you. That's why you want to create things. That's why people want to make art and music 
and writing all these things. And this was a place of writers. And at the end of this thing, people came up to me. They were all crying. I'm talking about women married to women, Hindus, Muslims were there. Mormons were there. Catholics were there. Every kind of person you can imagine. They came up to me crying. And the whole, then there was two or three more days that I was there. And they kept on coming to me. They'd come to me in the cafeteria. There was a Hindu woman that cried on my shoulder. She had a mark in her head. And she cried on my shoulder and she told me, she said, when you started singing that song, she said, you know, I'd been very sad because my mother had passed away. She said, but when you started singing that song, whatever it was, she said, I couldn't stop crying. She said, in that grief that I had, I, I, it wasn't there anymore. For some reason, there was something there that was taking it away. Praise God. And, and the, the, the Mormon people congrat coming up to me. Oh, I got to witness to a Muslim woman. Just beautiful. Start talking to her about Jesus. Because about about the, the church world that is really run from God. That's why Muslims they don't they, they, they say without dedication and consecration, without the, the real works that they don't want to believe. The Lord gave me wisdom. When I looked into her eyes, I felt like I was looking down into her soul. I don't remember all the words, but I started talking to her about Jesus and quoting the scriptures. And the day I left, like about three days later, praise God, there was a young transgender man sitting on the sitting on the picnic table. And as I was pulling out of there, he said, thank you for that song. Thank you for that song. And he kept on screaming, thank you for that song. And those were the last words as I went out. Praise God. And I knew it was that same angel of the Lord, praise God, that had come over me in New York. And I said, I know that I was born to serve the Lord. Amen. And this is what I hunger and thirst after. I hunger and thirst after whole groups of people. I don't care if it's five or 10 or 15 or 500 for the Holy Ghost to fall on them. God. Praise God. So I'm going to give my uh, husband the microphone, but while I'm... Uh, you know that he's going to take some out of every kind of group but not everybody. He's going to take some out of every type of people that are going to come to Jesus. Because I only believe in one door. And it's the Lamb of God. His name is Jesus. There's only one way. And his name is Jesus. You say, well, everybody believes that. I don't know. Some people say you can come this way. Or you can pray to this saying of this thing or that thing but that's a lie you the only mediator between god and man is jesus christ and he's the savior and there's nobody else's blood not not mary or anybody blood the only one blood the blood of jesus is the only way you're saved is through the blood of jesus you got to receive the blood of jesus christ you say, well, everybody knows that. Apparently, they don't. Hallelujah. <laughs> because <laughs> I run into them all the time. We think our religion will save us. No man's religion will save you. That's why I point people away from mankind. I'm not even promoting myself as a great minister or something. Because... The only ministry that's going to end up standing is the one on the rock. And it's on Jesus Christ, the rock of my salvation. He's my healer and my deliverer, my hope of salvation, my Holy Ghost baptizer. He is the one that gives us the strength to endure to the end. 
Yeah. And the, my Bible says the only ones that are going to be saved are those that endure to the end. Matthew 24, 13. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God even gave me a dream to confirm it. He gave me a dream and I saw a sealed container without any seams. It, it's impossible to make something with no seams. But it's totally sealed. And it came like the shape of a, like a cereal box. But it had rounded ends. And it came into my brain. And I was in my own bed. And, and I didn't hear an audible voice, but it said, be faithful. Clear as a bell to my brain. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. That's in Revelations chapter 2. I believe that's for all of us. You better find Jesus in the, on your deathbed. You better be still confessing Jesus. Like Bob. Our friend Bob. Praise God, he went to church. He went to that Wesleyan church. Praise God. Hallelujah. <coughs> the same one we went to <coughs> for a while. You know, when you can't find the answer, when you're searching, you go all over the place to try to find something. Because once you've ever been touched by the real Jesus, you're still going to be searching for the real Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. <coughs> And, and, and the real Jesus is what I'm all about. Praise the Lord. I want reality. Amen. My brother says, not formality. Amen. Not a cult. Not a form of godliness. Amen. Not a bunch of rituals going through a hocus pocus. Yeah. Bunch of talk. Lies of hell. God is real. Glory. Amen. And he wants you to be real. Hallelujah. With a Holy Ghost baptizer in you. Amen. A deliverer in you. A power in you. Glory. The power of God is unto salvation. God is not just in word only, but he's in power and demonstration of the gospel. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> There's no other Savior but the name and the man Jesus Christ. Lord. You can run from this. <clears throat> you can try to hide. But I'm like Muhammad Ali. He said you could run. You could try to hide. But in this rain, you can't hide. You can run, but you can't hide from God. Amen. God's the only one in command. And he's not just religion. He's not just, I'm sitting on a pew somewhere. He is real. Yes, Lord. And he holds our soul in his hand. Glory. What a fearful thing to be in the hands of God. Yes, it is. Because, you know, I give Jesus a lot of thought. Brother Ron, believe it or not, I keep him on my mind a lot. And not only I think about Jesus Christ. And by the way, you're welcome here. I'm not mad at anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not mad. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I give Jesus a lot of thought. And sometimes, you know, we go horseback riding or I, I come into the camp or you'll see a fire. I'll burn my, my limbs that fall off my trees in my yard and I'll burn it and I'll look at that fire. And I think of being there ever, forever and ever and ever. All through history, certain church persecuted other people that believed in God and burned them at the stake. A horrible torture to be have your flesh consumed. And I think about these things. I thought about what if I'm in that fire and my skin is being shriveled up and my nerves are being burnt. <coughs> It's a horrible thing. But that only lasts for a certain time. Even the people that burnt the stake, they either smother or they, they, they die. And I, I, I haven't done a study on it. But I used to read a lot about religion. And I learned about a, uh, a certain religion that burnt people at the stake if they disagreed with them. God doesn't tell us to burn somebody at the stake 
He doesn't tell us to put them in hell. He doesn't tell us to hate them or despise them because they don't exactly agree with us. That's right. Jesus never did. Jesus didn't say burn your enemies at the stake. He didn't say kill them. He didn't say talk about them. He didn't say despise them because they don't agree with you word for word. Hallelujah. Leave them alone. <coughs> Touch not my anointing and do my prophets no harm. Now the anointing is many anointings. A prophetic anointing is a powerful, mighty anointing. A real prophet like Jeremiah. People like that. But God anoints his handmaids and his servants yeah, with a certain anointing. Glory. That's why I'm afraid to touch a lot of people. I don't want to think bad. In fact, if, even if they're really on my case, praise God or hate me or threaten me, I am praying for them. <clears throat> and I said, well, praise God, when we were in the Philippines... One of my testimonies is not that glorious. <clears throat> because this man, Brother Theron, passed by because he was drunk. Filipinos as a whole are wonderful people. Very friendly. They even love Americans because of us uh, uh, freeing them from the Japanese back in World War II. And I see J Filipinos with some... Uh, American flags on them and on their chest. And, and I was like, what? You know, I'm used to America where half the people hate America in America and say we're all evil and everything's bad and, and prejudice. And all. I'm used to that America. But in Philippines, it wasn't like that. They actually liked you. If you were American, you were kind of a, a special thing, at least where I went. I didn't go to Manila. But where we went, but praise God, they, they received the word of God. They received the Jesus we preach. We didn't preach any religion. I did not preach one word of Baptist. I did not want to preach one word of Pentecostal. I never mentioned the glories of, of the uh, of, uh, Pentecostal movement of the uh, uh, the Baptist, the Methodist, the Pente whatever they were. I never mentioned one word. We never mentioned my, our religion or where we came from. I didn't. I don't even preach anything but Jesus Christ. And that's the only thing that's going to last. Amen. Amen. It's Amen. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Amen. You can be loyal to stuff. I preached this. Somebody heard it. On the, on the YouTube. He said, well, I, uh, Brother Tom, you, you said not to be loyal to your religion. Or I, I said, I am not loyal to my religion anymore. I'm not just loyal to a preacher anymore. And I'm pretty loyal. Hallelujah. I'm not going to just be loyal to this or that. But I want to be loyal to my Savior, Jesus Christ, Amen. forever and forever. So that I'll reign with him. And I'll be with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's so real. But God is not bringing us into religion. He's bringing us into the reality of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what I crave. I crave reality. Real. Amen. And I want to be real. And this guy in the Philippines, we were preaching. Boy, I was preaching. I was jumping around and running and the, the anointing was on me, and I got through, and we other preachers preached. And I went, and I was praying for people, and one guy was drunk in the corner. So I thought I was waiting out. The Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly. And not everybody wants to be prayed for, okay? So if you don't want to be prayed for, you don't have to be. Cause, cause, uh, but anyway, this guy, he just... He suddenly started swinging. I'm, I have this, my hands on his head. <laughs> he started swinging. <laughs> and I was the only person there. <laughs> so I guess he's swinging at me. Praise God. Next thing I know, he throttled me. And he, 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 you know, he was like swinging, but he caught me in the throat. 
But let me tell you, it felt like a baby. It went like, like that. It felt like nothing. And I'm from a fighting background, but I've been trying to serve the Lord for 40, 40 something years, a long time. 48 years, something like that. And I've been working on, me and Jesus been working on me. Glory. <laughs> for a long time. And I've understood this thing of self-defense and self-survival. Well, the Lord never did it. You know, he didn't, he didn't karate chop anybody. He didn't kick their feet out from under them or anything like that if they were going to hurt him. He, he, he said we were like lambs among wolves. Amen. Sheep. Hallelujah. And, and my natural nature is not sheep like. Hallelujah. But that guy, he did that. And your brother Ron, I just went like, put my head down. And went like that. I didn't know. You know, when you're in a fight, so to speak, you don't know what you're doing. I used to fight and you're bam. And your instincts and everything is going. And I just went like this. Put my head down. Like a sheep. <laughs> And I, you know, he could have been knocking me out or something. It just stopped instantly. And I looked. And the next thing I know, he comes over to me. And he says, I mean, this guy is a Filipino. He speaks mainly their language, but in perfect English. English is their second language, but not that many really know it that good. And he said, I am so sorry. For, for hitting you or what, whatever. I am so sorry. Forgive me. And I decided, put my arms around it. I said, I forgive you for hitting me. I forgive you. I love you, brother. And, and that encouraged me so much, Sister Sue. Because that's only Jesus does that. I wouldn't do that. You know, if I came over and slapped you in the face, would you, like, you think you would... Oh, I love you. Forgive me. <laughs> no. It, and that encouraged me, Brother Ron, more than anything. Because that is not a great testimony. The Bible says we cast out devils. You know, we're supposed to be the ministers. We cast the devils out and then they get delivered and all. It didn't work that good. <laughs> Sometimes you, we're just learners. I'm an old learner. I'm just learning to follow the Lord. I'm still striving to enter into the gate. I can't say I know all about what I'm doing. But God still does miracles sometimes. Glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. But, but that guy, that, and the people said, in fact, two of the three of the young people that were with us, that were joining us and with a family that supported us, they came up and said, Brother Tom, we're so sorry. That guy was drunk. I said, well, I know he was drunk. <laughs> I've been around some drunk people before. And, and, and they all apologized. They were so sad. But later on, they came and reported. and said that guy just settled down and, and quit cursing and doing all the stuff he's doing and got quiet and just sat there. And the Lord delivered him. Amen. 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 Yes, Hallelujah. Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I can't take much credit. You know, you're the mighty man of God. Cast that devil out. Praise God. And that's the way the Lord is with me. He's constantly showing me that we, me, you know, me, but we are not the, the great thing. Hallelujah. We're not the great thing. The Bible says in second of Philippians chapter 2. I preached this five times in a row, I think. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What mind? The mind of Christ. Yes. Let this mind, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death 
even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. That's even the demons. Hallelujah. That every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Uh, what was that name? Jesus. 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 Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Praise God. Your own salvation. You work out your own salvation. Praise God. We are accountable for ourselves. Indeed. Praise the Lord. We're accountable for the word of God and for what we believe. And we're accountable before God for his word. But we have to work out your own salvation. You say, well, my priest and my preacher said thus and thus and thus. Well, well that's great. Praise God. You better work out your own salvation with fear and tremble, please. Yes. Trembling. Hallelujah. Amen. And you better believe this word. Amen. This is the Textus Receptus. I'll tell you what. Do you know what Textus Receptus means? Receive, receive text. Yes. The receive that yes. Moses wrote. <coughs> the five books. <coughs> you yes. think how, how did Moses get this? In the beginning, yes. God created the heavens and the earth. How? He had got it by divine revelation. Amen. The Bible was written by divine revelation. And then there were the judges. And then there was the kings and the chronicles and the, and the prophets. Praise God. Every one of those prophets prophesied about Jesus coming. The Messiah coming. Hallelujah. The whole universe is created around the fact that Jesus Christ comes to the earth is come, is come, is come now, is come in the past, is come now, is now in the earth, in the future. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Praise God. He is the King of glory. He is the power of God into salvation. The only way you're going to see God is in the face of Jesus Christ. There's only one God. One faith. One baptism. Indeed, brother. Hallelujah. Glory. Jesus. He's the king. Hallelujah. But he came. And I've told this. I keep saying the same thing. He came to seek and he sought no reputation. You know, God through Christ created the universe. Amen. You say, who's our creator? God. Jesus. Through God. Through Christ Amen. created all things. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord. Praise Jesus. Oh, and now we are the creation of God. We are to manifest Christ. This pew woman stuff is over with. Amen, brother. Yeah. Just, just sitting down and listening. You are a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're a disciple. You're called to be a disciple. means a follower of Jesus. Amen. A yes. follower of the Word. He was the Word made flesh. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made. Amen. He was the light and the life of God. Yes. He was the light of Christ. The light of Jesus is the life. He was the light of life. That life that was in Christ was God. Yes, it was. Amen. It's God, brothers. Amen. <laughs> God was in Christ reconciling the world into himself. Amen. Yes, yes, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Retain this in your knowledge. Amen. There's no other way. Amen. And when I read my Bible, it says there's some tough things to follow in the Lord. 
He said you will be persecuted. Indeed. He said you will be hated of all nations. So this thing of being popular is over with. Amen. <laughs> this thing of being accepted by your own brethren who also believe in the Lord, but they don't, somehow they just don't get all of it. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. I am not the judge of all this, but all I know is that the more I stick with the scriptures, the less friends and buddies I have. Yeah. <laughs> the more I go by the word, that the less people surround me or ever pat me on the back. In fact, Brother Ron, I don't have anybody patting me on the back for following Jesus. <laughs> when I went to my men, we, me and Brother Ron own businesses. I went to my men that had kept my business running and not only supported them because I'm concerned about them. I want them to make a living when we go gallivanting all over the world as we're beginning to. Because God said, go ye into all the world. Glory. Hallelujah. I've been waiting. I'm 74 in a few days. And I've been waiting Praise God. to go into the world. I've been waiting by going somewhere. But I haven't been that far. And there's a world out there to be saved. Amen. Somebody's going to have to do this job. Somebody out there. Are here. I want to be one of them. Amen. The Lord prophesied through a gentleman many decades ago and said, You are the one of the one young men that's going to preach this gospel in the end time. Well, I ain't young anymore. Praise God, but I'm ready. I'm ready to do it. Hallelujah. I'm going. I'm going. You can't get rid of me. You can't try to scrape me off. I am not. You're not getting rid of me. I'm going. I got no other place to go to. I've been there, done that. Praise God, I've been there and done a few things. And I've messed up too. And I've failed. And I've fallen in my, on my face for trying to follow the Lord. And I've been self-righteous. I've been holier than thou. <coughs> I, I made every mistake Praise God, I've stumbled and fell, but God has given me strength in my old age Praise to serve the Lord. Praise God, brother. Come on. He's given us strength in our old age Woo! to serve Jesus. Yeah, Lord. <coughs> There's no other way. If I could find some other way, I probably would because naturally we're cowards. We do not want to face the enemy. Amen. You know, to go into a natural battle of any kind, any era. I always think of that sword hacking era. To go into battle and all those arrows and swords and now missiles and guns and tanks and, and, and everything. Go into battle, you got to be kind of crazy. You get your legs shot off. You get your ears shot off. Your your skull, your, your, your body could be just torn to shreds. I've seen soldiers, I know soldiers, missing legs. I've been mangled or in a, uh, where they, uh, explosion under them and it rattles their brain and ruptures their body. Praise Jesus. And I pray for some of those soldiers. But going to war is no fun thing. When we sign up for this army, we don't really know what will happen to us. I know Jesus is going to protect us a lot. Hallelujah. But someday, I know there's a cross to bear. Yes. Someday, I know I don't know what all will happen. But we've got to take a hold of Jesus. And by faith, we've got to win this war. Glory. The Bible in Revelation says overcomer. To the overcomer is given a crown of life. To the overcomer, you've got to overcome sin. You've got to overcome your own fears. You've got to overcome your own anxieties. You're afraid your husband might not go with you. You're afraid your wife 
Uh, it might not go with you. You're afraid uh, uh, of what people could do to you. But right in Revelations, he says, don't be afraid of what men can do to you. Fear God. Glory. Who can destroy both God, body and soul in hell. Amen, brother. Hallelujah. Well, I can quote that, but I don't mean I'll get it totally. But praise God, this is why we've got to have the faith of Jesus. Like when you had to go across the water, but you can't swim, but you, you wanted a life jacket, but you went ahead and went across the water anyway, didn't you? Praise God, because if you're going to be in this army, you're going to go across some water. You're going to go across uh, some lands. Amen, you might go across the desert. It's all according to your calling. Glory. Some of you are not called to do that. But you're going to get bold enough to go across the street. Glory. Talk to your neighbor. <laughs> Amen. Talk to somebody. Amen. You say, well, I'm not worthy. I'm not that strong. So, well, get strong. Amen. <laughs> Grow in grace. And That's why we're here. We're trying to help you get strong. I don't know you from anybody else, but I'm just a Christian with Jesus in me, and I love you, and I care about you, and whoever will, let him come, and I want you to see, get strong, get something. That's why I'm constantly seeking the Holy Ghost. You say, well, I have the Holy Ghost, or, or I've got a portion, or I had experience 20 years ago. Praise God, we need the anointing of the Holy Ghost now. We need Christ in you now. Every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is antichrist. Amen. Do you confess Christ in your life today? Yes, yes. Praise yes. God, you confess. If you don't tonight, before you go, you're going to confess him in your flesh because this is the time to join God's work. Yes. To be ignited. Yes. Yes. In the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. God's word is powerful and quicker, more quick than a two-edged sword. Yes. And it cuts you both ways. Yes, Lord. That's why more preachers are going to hell. More priests will be going to hell than make it to heaven. Amen. Because we, we're responsible for the word. If we preach to others and don't do ourselves, yep. we make ourselves a transgressor. Okay. Hallelujah. Come, says the Lord. And I'm going to stop. I don't feel to go on and on. But I just want to encourage you to follow Jesus and hold fast to God's unchanging hand. Lord. The blood of Jesus washes away your sin. And this is the time. Praise God. If there's no one else coming, Brother Ron asked me to do this. And I think we should all stand up and come. Because, look, I know probably everybody's a Christian. But they don't need any be probably about it. Daily. We're going to confess. Praise God. Yes. And we're going to pray for you too. But I, I want to lead you in this. Confession is made into salvation. You say, well, I confessed when I was a little girl. That we're talking about tonight. Tonight. Praise God. Tonight. And you might be a pastor. You could be an evangelist right here. But let's do it together. Because we need Christ. We want to be sure of our salvation. And we want to be sure that we endure to the end. So to be sure of that, we need the mind of Christ. We need to be full of God. Jesus said, Satan cometh and have nothing in me. We've got to have that confession. We, we need him. So say, Jesus. I receive you, I receive you Lord. with all my heart, with all my, heart. With all my mind, all my mind. With, all my with all my soul, with all my heart. All my heart. And I confess you, you. as my, my Savior, as my healer, as my deliverer. Deliver. Jesus, I renounce, I renounce. All, evil. all evil, all diseases. All all backsliding, backsliding. All, unbelief. all unbelief. I renounce all fear, all fear. but I receive, you. I receive you, and I ask you to come into me, come into me. Heal, me. heal me, deliver me, deliver me. 
Jesus, empower me, empower me. With, the Holy Ghost. with the Holy Ghost and with faith. With faith. And I receive you as my eternal Savior, yes. both tonight, tonight and forevermore. forevermore. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you, sister. Yes, Lord. For God has sent you to restore you. To be yes. one of faith, not of doubt, of shakiness. That you have been shaky, but I will put you on the rock. Even this night, I shall restore this gift and the calling that's in your life. Even this night, be strong, be faithful, and I will bring you forth in a new ministry. I will bring you forth in a deliverance ministry. You must fast, you must pray, you must search my scripture. You cannot be slack to read my word. Suruka Satae. Elo, Holy Ghost. Let the fire, God. Elo Rukosta. Be fire, God. Go in their soul in Jesus' name. Be restored. And even the powers that have tried to bind you, I break them. By the name of Jesus, I break this yoke. I cast it out in Jesus' name. Be restored. Feel with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. God, do an operation on Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. For the Lord has given you a ministry to go into the highways and hedges and streets and lanes and even other people of all types. For you've seen your faithfulness and he's shown you to even do some things. And this night, you're empowered to go forth. And I empower you to speak my word. Though you're a woman, I am God, and God is in Christ, and Christ is in you. Be strong, saith the Lord. Fear not their faces, but speak only my word. If you'll stay in my word, and even preach and speak my word only, you will be safe in case in the power in the spirit, in the faith. Siku Raba Yelo Ruye. Silaba Rua. Be strong. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Ilo Raba Kushelo Raba Kuye. In the Holy Ghost is restoring this anointing. Siku Ruba. Jesus name. Lord. Jesus name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. You got your oil, brother. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'll anoint you with oil. Hallelujah. The Bible says. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise God. This is my longtime friend. And, and sister been like a grandmother to my daughter and this very special person praise God friend of our friends and she's confessing Jesus Jesus only say it Jesus only Jesus only Jesus confess him as my savior say Jesus is my only savior and my only redeemer and my only healer God in the name of Jesus restore these lungs God restore these lungs God restore this body I put air I put life I put air in our lungs Sikuruye, be healed. Sika, surukushe, be strong in the Lord. You are on the rock of Jesus Christ. 
Yellow Trusha. God, let the Holy Ghost come in. Let the Holy Spirit fire, God. Shataye. Chico Sangalabareye. Be strong, saith the Lord. In me. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. A new change, a new leaf. A new leaf, says to A new way. Hallelujah. A new strength. A new power. Praise Jesus. Just reaching out. See, Jesus is the one. Jesus is the one. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're all on a journey, Sister Esther. But I know if y'all can't, you know, that there was people in the Bible that people just prayed. Send the word, yes. Just by believing. And um, so I believe. Thank you, Jesus. And um, it's just your Do that back in the old days. Stand there, proxy. But Ron, I feel like you should be praying. Praise God. Yes. Meant to be. I yes. Meant to be trusted. I feel like Lord, we should all pray. We decree yes. a oh, special God. miracle you, done for this one that's had the stroke. We send the word of the Lord like you sent the word to the centurion servant. We send the word of healing. Restore you for energy, Lord God. You said we're two or three are gathered. God, we're prayer warriors here. We're believers here, God. And we rebuke the devourer. You said, prove me now. We drive Satan back. We curse the forces of evil. And Lord God, we ask you, God, to restore and give a miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus, you said, ask and you shall receive. In Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus. Praise God. Amen. I felt that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Touch the hem of his garment. Yes. Amen. I'll just say the closing prayer, but while we're in the group here, um, I had a prayer request. I invited the brother to the tent here. I was in the big, the Pickens uh, flea market uh, many, many mo uh, months or two ago, and I, I mean, seen this guy ministering with songs, and I invited him to the tent, and the devil just jumped on him, man. He's had three major operations and and he's on the verge of uh, basically the devil's trying to take him out and i said tonight when i get to church i said we're going to gather up in a circle and we're going to pray for him too so his name is tommy and he lives not far from here god we send the word of the lord to tommy this minister of god's word this beautiful musician God, we ask you to raise him up. Give him a few more good years, Lord. He said he's had three operations. He might have to have another operation. Gangrene set in, God. God, the devil jumped on him. But, Lord, we bind the forces of evil. You said what we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What we loose on earth, we loose in heaven. We loose these infirmities of the flesh. God, and we send healing to his body. Resurrect him in the newness of life. In the mighty name of Jesus, visit him this night with healing. Send your angel. Everyone you got to do, Lord. God, we're just decreeing it. And we're agreeing together in this little prayer group, God. And we're asking it to be done in your name. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. Give all the glory and the honor to the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. If you guys want to stick around for a little bit more fellowship, you can. We got one more night tomorrow night and Sunday night is our last night. Two more nights. Amen. And we welcome you back to the tent. Amen. Brother Ron and the team. God bless you.